Hey guys, how's it going and thanks for coming. I'm Nick and this is Real Life Money where we talk about real life and money because you know schools aren't. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. So let's get started. So in this video guys, we're going over what banks don't want you to know about debt. And this video was inspired by Minority Mindset. He has a great channel, a lot bigger than myself. Uh, so I'll leave a link in the description. If you haven't heard of him, he's awesome. He talks about like money stuff and you know, similar things that I do uh, all the time. But I liked the idea of the title. Um, so I created my own spinoff of that and I did work at a bank. So I have some inside scoops. All right, so debt and banks are essentially like peas and carrots because the bank is essentially formed off of debt. So even starting off with simple checking and savings accounts, you know, you just put money in there and they make money off of that. But at the same time, you might want to use that money at any point, like in a checking account, you could even withdraw from a savings account. So they have to balance that. But essentially they are indebted to society and just people in general because they could take that money whenever. Now aside from checking and savings accounts and money markets if you want to throw those in there kind of similar but they also have the terrifying and some people love them but credit cards and essentially for most people they're screwing people because the average interest rate is like 15% on these credit cards. I've seen interest rates like 25%. I think the highest I might have seen like 27%, maybe 28%. But that's crazy when you think about it. If you think like you have, you pay $100 for something and with the interest, you now owe, total balance would be 125 bucks when originally it cost you only 100. So the next time a teller asks you if you want a credit card, Double think that I know because I used to be a teller and ask I hated asking people for that because I know they were going to misbute um, Just screw themselves with it um, But that's how it is now remember I saw someone you know I had like hunt uh, not a hundred I mean people probably have a hundred thousand dollars in credit card debt But I remember someone had like ten thousand dollars driving an Escalade, you know looking fancy But had a ridiculous amount of debt and like a hundred bucks in their account like that's that's not how you should live. Another way how banks make money, um, essentially kind of using debt because people are still have checking and savings accounts, but with fees and there are ridiculous amount of fees and the bank makes literally billions of dollars in fees. There could be not meeting minimum balance fees. There could be overdraft fees. There could be late fees and so many, ridiculous fees out there they stop naming them and just lump them all into miscellaneous fees now here's how they kind of get you with this it's usually in significant amount it, you know it could be like a $15 fee or $30 overdraft fee or whatever it is in you know separate banks but it's not a lot until it is because it adds up ridiculously obviously because they're making tons of money on it and in most situations, it's completely avoidable. It could be just due to confusion. People don't understand checking and savings accounts. You would think they're simple, but it's not. I've seen it. Um, so people get, you know, overdraft fees. They're not keeping that minimum in there. I don't like minimums, but you know, they have some banks out there uh, and it just adds way up. And kind of stupidity because people try to spend, you know, $25 when they only have $20 in their account. So eh, there you go. More debt that the bank is using are loans. And there are a bunch of different loans. There could be, well, some of the main ones, car loans, house loans, also called mortgages, and personal loans for whatever your heart desires. If you want to build a shed, if you want a pool, if you want, I don't know, a driveway, a dog, you could probably get a loan for. But this is more debt that they're essentially kind of using from other people and they're giving it to you and you owe them more money. Now, you know what doesn't involve borrowing or interest or debt of any kind? 
using cash and not borrowing anything at all to begin with. So if you're sick of people asking for their money back, then you shouldn't take it in the first place because you don't have it in the first place. And also, then you won't owe anyone anything. Now, just because a bank approves you for a certain amount, you know, let's say we're talking about like mortgages and they approve you for like $300,000, just to throw a number out there. That doesn't mean you have to borrow $300,000. You might like a house that's like two fifty. dollars That's fine. You don't have to use every single dollar that they're giving you because then you will owe them less. They don't want that, but deep down you really should. So all of this kind of breaks down into kind of two different categories of what a person could be. One person could be a consumer and they buy things where the other person could be either a saver slash investor where, I mean, they essentially don't buy things. So this is relating to credit cards because of course they're trying to make you spend as much as you possibly can. You could see that by the, um, you know, like the sign on bonus spend $500 to get a hundred or $200 cash back in the first three months. They want you to establish those spending habits. So the game isn't trying to buy something for as little as you possibly can. You know, it's not buying $50 jeans when it's originally a hundred dollars. No, cause you're still spending money. If you really want to win at that game, just don't buy it in the first place. If you want to talk about manipulation of the mind, it's amazing how like businesses, stores, and just companies have manipulated society's mind of how they get us to believe that we are actually saving money while spending it at the same exact time. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm selling jeans. I got a couple new pairs of jeans. They're a little tight. They'll break in, don't worry. So let's say I have two pairs. One pair is 50 bucks. The other pair is on sale for $50, originally $100. Little do you know that I lied about that and it's $50 either way. Most people would focus on the $50 ones because they're on sale. But little do they know, both pair of jeans are still $50 and you're paying the same exact amount. That saying, buy more, save more, frustrates me beyond belief because you're not saving anything, you're giving them money. So it's about knowing that you don't need something in the first place, also called materialism. Now, yeah, of course, you do need things to live and survive and it's okay to buy things you have to balance it and be smart about it, but you don't need things to be happy. P companies make us believe that. So what do you think of that, guys? If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you think about it, banks are kind of scams because they don't have any money. They're using everyone else's. Um, but anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.